Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Today is a special day, a special time. I have an incredible, incredible uh, artist joining me today. She is my friend and um, her name is Yael Janowski. She's a fellow Mexican and I'm going to bring her in um, and hopefully she will request to go live with me. Let's see. Um, I can see that you're there. So Yael, just if you can, um, you can request me. There we go. Okay. So while we wait, uh, Yael is a fellow Mexican. We went to high school together. We have a whole history of, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Welcome, welcome, Yael. I'm so excited you. that you're joining us today. Um, I am so, too. yes, I'm so grateful. This is the first time I bring in a dear friend of mine. We grew up together. This is so great. I am so, so glad. And I feel very, very happy that you're joining my army of artists. So thank you for being here. No, thank you for the invitation. Yes, it's actually funny that we're going to speak in English the whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes me more nervous. <laughs> I'm not Don't used be to talking in English, but let's, let's try to do it. Yes, it'll be great. It's going to be a, a fantastic interview. And so I'm very, very excited that you're here. And um, Yael, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And um, where are you now? Because I know you're not in Mexico City anymore. So tell us yeah, a little bit about yourself. I moved to San Diego in 2000, so I've been here for almost 21 years. I'm in my home studio, so welcome to my studio. <laughs> um, and I went to school in Mexico City for graphic design, worked for a little bit as a freelance, got married, got, uh, got kids, moved here with a third one on the way. So I was a full-time mom. And it was a job that I and really enjoy, and I was really lucky to have it. And when my youngest son started preschool, I was I needed a me time because all the moving. I I grew up with a very tight family, so I didn't have that here. So I needed like a me time. I um, everything was different when I moved here. It was different language, different um, school system, different medical system, everything was different. So it was really hard for me in the first years, uh, but I was still doing all the arts and crafts with my kids and the school play, I was painting the back, uh, the backdrop and I was active uh, with my creativity, always. Uh, but then I started classes. I started in drawing classes and then oil classes, pastels. I went to all the mediums and then my oil paint uh, teacher moved back to TJ. So I couldn't go to classes and I looked for art classes and the only time available for me was a printmaking class. So I was there for 16 years. I just stopped, uh, stopped doing that. But I'm a printmaker. I consider myself my printmaker. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So now so I'm taking oil, paint, oil painting, acrylics, and I'm still doing printmaking. I, I, I don't have a press at home. So I, what I do at home, it's uh, stamps. And I can, yeah. I can uh, do a demo for you later. Yes, I'm excited for all that. But before we get into that, um, you know, uh, for people that don't know, you and I went to the same high school and we have been friends for a long time. And then you moved to San Diego, I moved to Minneapolis, and then we disconnected ourselves a little bit and we just right. connected again through art. And um, exactly. we always were very creative. I think both of us grew up uh, very creative. Can you talk a little bit about your childhood and and uh, were your parents influenced uh, you in, in your path to decide that you wanted it to go into graphic design or art? Or how did that work for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born with a crayon in my hand, pra practically. My dad had a, um, 
toy factory and he was doing his mold for the toys and the dolls and every time I could go to the, the factory and play with the painting the dolls or <laughs> assemble the toys it was really fun and my I have I am one of four um, siblings my brother is an architect my brother my other brother is a graphic designer my mom was always cooking and setting tables, incredible tables. She was doing her flower arrangements. So creativity was always in my house. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's, it's a huge influence to be able to be surrounded by, by art. And we were lucky enough that we grew up in a Mexico city that is very different than what it looks like now, but we exactly. were very free to go everywhere. We would go to museums, we would go to parks, we would go to the pyramids. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, my, my parents are art collectors. So we were going to the art fairs, to museums. Uh, we met artists, so they came to my house to have dinner with us. It was incredible and it, it was like part of my formation for like um, appreciation for art since I was little. And I met a lot of artists, famous and not famous ones. And that was part of, I think, uh, what brought me here. And I use yeah. a lot of bright colors because I think Mexico City, you think about Mexico City, it, it's great, it's not. <laughs> it's full of colors. You go to the markets and you have you see those incredible fruits and the piñatas and all the arts and crafts in Mexico are very colorful. Yes, so, and the amount of artists and artistry that exists in Mexico City is just incredible. I mean, I, I feel very proud and very connected to my roots and um, I always embrace them and embrace them in my own work because I think it's important to, you know, to embrace where you come from and, uh, you know, to love the place that you come from. And I think Mexico yeah. has, has had that impact on, on both you and I and, and the smells. I think what you're saying is the smells, the tradition, the movement, you know, all yeah. the things that we have in a big city uh, moving to the United States is just very different. It's just a different pace very. of everything. <laughs> everything is different. <laughs> Yeah, well, yes. I'm Chula Vista, and Chula Vista is like an extension of Mexico, but it's a different Mexico. So I'm from Mexico City, it's not DJ. But, it's, right. but still, I still have the taste of Mexico here. Yes. And so now that you finish your graphic design, um, you were in Mexico still, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, you said you were working as a graphic designer? Yeah, only as a freelancer. I was making uh, cards, like presentation cards, the ones that you put on the uh, presents. Business for... cards? Business cards, but for kids. Okay. So they had illustrations, and they were fun. Yeah. And I was doing uh, some logos, and that's it. A menu we made, and I don't know, very, very few. Basic, uh, yeah. Yeah, very, very. Yeah. So fast forward when you move to San Diego and now you have your three kids and you have time for yourself, you decide to move away from graphic design and start into thinking about <laughs> art? <laughs> yeah, I was taking art only as a me time, just like an escape, like a hobby, but slowly developed into being a business. And it was developed really in a business like two years ago. And during the pandemic, it was when they flourished. I already have my my website, but I turned it into a store. And yeah, I took uh, marketing classes, so we were. I, I'm like more aware of the sales and with our yeah. friend Sergio Gomez, who's amazing, by the way, <laughs> in our next level yes. academy. Yeah. So yeah, we took. I took that. Um, that uh, challenge with four of my friends and then after that every uh, while doing that we were meeting every week and we were talking about the challenge and we were like pushing and pulling one one of each other and so we founded the group named five art so we are business oriented 
but uh, we like to give back to the community. So our first um, exhibition, was, yeah. No, it was an event because it was a live um, um, launch of our art. It was for Valentine's Day, but we donated one hundred percent of the money. It it went to our um, direct relief. So it sounds familiar, right? <laughs> Art exactly. is helping, uh, helping their community at large. And yeah. uh, it feels really good to do that. And as artists, we can do that for sure. And it just, mm -hmm. it feels really good. And it's nice that you found your group of people that you can surround yourself with and, um, you know, bounce each other ideas and also um, do marketing and business um, behind behind the idea so it pushes mm -hmm. it even further more yeah it's um, really important to surround yourself with people with a network yeah it's like a support group it's really exactly fun. exactly yeah. so so where are you now like where are you in your art practice and um how do you how did you get here uh, well i was taking printmaking classes and oil painting classes and both of my teachers were are not like business oriented they are like the stereotype of artists like <laughs> I'm painting 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 or creating 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 and when you're doing that and it was also for me when you're doing that and when you enjoy doing that you're not aware of that you have to um, advertise yourself or look for people uh, that sell your art or like submit to shows and all that stuff. So I was like just creating, 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 creating. And then I found this place called Art on 30th and they more orient, like more art to market. So there they have um, an exhibition every month where you submit your art and you get juried in or not invited. So I was doing that and I think it was uh, 2017 that I was invited to be a part of the mentor group and that uh, we had to submit one painting every month and that was um, always that was it yeah you, you that was what for the juror exactly that was always, uh, like it was our responsibility to submit a, a painting for that one yeah, and I had my first show there in 2019. So you you find yourself accountable, you know you exactly. you. It makes you show up. It makes you exactly. want to create because you have a responsibility. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, and you have like the <laughs> the picking on on the shoulder, like you have to do it. You have to do it, and yeah. And I I found my art family there too. I have a lot of friends there. Who, we really love each other and it's amazing to be part of that group too. Yes. And yes. Yeah. So it was really hard for me to to say or to admit that I am an an I'm an artist. It took me a while. I, I it does take a while because it's it's I think being an artist sometimes it's not validated as we think of it. Uh, especially when you want to be a professional artist, uh, you really need that uh, validation from others. And mm -hmm. really when it starts with yourself, you need to validate yourself, you need to love what you do, and you need to show up and make art every single day. And exactly. then all of a sudden it will click. But I think it's one of the hardest places to be to become a professional artist and to be, mm -hmm. like I said, validated for it. Exactly. And it doesn't matter if people buy your art or not, because not everybody is going to love your art to buy it. Right, like, right. My, uh, they say, oh, I love your art. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I love what I make. And sometimes I hear, oh, maybe if you don't paint, so, uh, paint with so much paint, maybe you will sell more. I don't care. I, I'm not care about the selling. I... I care about doing what I like and what I love. Painting is my passion and sales. I, of course, I want to sell, to sell my paintings because I want to paint more. I don't have space <laughs> to store all my paintings. You know what I mean? 
Yes, but it comes from you and being happy with what you're doing. And I think that's that, you know, it's it's a similarity to life. We need to, you know, we need to just be uh, very not as critical to to our beings and be more accepting. And if you love what you do, then people will start seeing it and it will start start coming through in your in your conversations with your with your paintings. And then hopefully the collectors will start seeing that. And so it's just a, a really good cycle to be in. If you understand completely your language and you can talk about your artwork in a way that that it connects to you. Um, people will start paying attention to that. Exactly. I just had a um, a show at Ashton Gallery, and I sold I I exhibit nine paintings and I sold five, which was really <laughs> yay! I'm so I happy for you. And we're going to talk about that show because that show really is something different uh that i think that it just it's an amazing amazing uh accomplishment that you just had and i love the idea of um what you have created so i can't wait for you to show us around and sure. show us around your your studio and i know um you have a small studio but it doesn't matter you are very organized and you can fit a lot of paintings in there <laughs> yeah paintings here and i have the stuff over there yeah but i have to be very organized and the room feels small it's it's it was my guest room uh so i took over so my advice for you or for your people <laughs> not for you because you have huge <laughs> studio <laughs> uh, I started my garage like with a folding table and then it was like very uncomfortable for me because I had to move the cars out set the tarp put the table put my materials let them dry and come back and so it was like no this is not not working for me yeah took over the guest room I had a bed here <laughs> the TV <laughs> my foldable table and then one of my friends gave me this table that I have right now because she was remodeling in her studio and while she was doing that the architect uh, built her a fake table it's a fake table because this the top is a door oh cool yeah. <laughs> it goes like with the theme of your door. of your chairs huh? <laughs> It goes exactly. with the theme of your chairs. <laughs> Very exactly. fitting. <laughs> yeah. So she gave me this table. I put my foldable table away. I so I gave away my my bed and then I was really lucky that before the lockdown I had my shelf my shelves built and all the things um the the hooks and the, the yeah. Hooks. Yeah. Yeah. So when so you I, were ready, you were ready to move I was in there. Ready, ready. <laughs> <laughs> that <was> and, good. <laughs> so the I pandemic have... was actually good in a way for you because you were um, in a space that you love, that you were inspired to be in, and exactly. you were organized and you were ready to come in every day and show up and do something. And that's where you created this incredible new. Um, idea that you've been working on. So um, I can't wait for you to uh, take us around your studio. So if you can do that right now and switch the camera sure. around, that'd be great. Do you want to start with the studio or you want to start with the show that I had? Let's start with the studio and then we'll okay. go to the show. Yep. Uh -huh. Oops. Are you there? Okay. okay. There we go. I'm here, I'm here. So this is my studio. This is my... Okay. Um, this I have all my tools here. My inspiration board. Board here. Look chairs. at all the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> chairs everywhere. I put this here because I'm going to show you later. When I have yeah. here my all my books and all my mediums. This is a shelf with my art, the, the small art. I was doing small art during the lockdown because I had uh, my daughter and my son sharing their room with me. So I couldn't work large. 
<laughs> these are my, my new brushes But, just in case because i have a yeah. store here home. these are my brushes these are my all my boards wow you really are you do have a store there <laughs> <laughs> i do <laughs> i have more brushes here just don't tell my husband because i need to go to the store <laughs> So this is what I was talking about. I have these, um, the hooks. Oh, so you can just yeah. move them around. Do you, I'm going to turn the comments off so we can actually see the whole painting, uh, the whole studio. So um, the hooks that you're talking about, you have uh, wood on the wall and then you have hooks so you can move the boards fairly easy, correct? Yeah, like this. Yeah. And I have, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I have, what else? Well, I have a TV here because I do like the noise. I like to paint with noise. So I can't <laughs> think because I think my best work comes when I'm not thinking. I agree. But I use music instead of TV. I don't know if yeah. I could do it with a TV. <laughs> it's either <laughs> TV. I can, I do uh, YouTube videos too. And it's, it's fun. Because yeah. I don't listen to the TV either. I'm just like painting and going. My... Yeah. 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 I have uh, in, um, art books here. My notebook. You really have utilized that space incredibly well. I am very, very proud Thank of you. you. Wow. I have my, my etchings here that I was working on. Or I have etchings, more paint here. And this is all storage here. Wow. So you really can make it work. I mean, you yeah. are all over and it really works. Amazing. Yeah. This is my wall where I, I uh, named it the contemplation wall. So if I'm working here on my chair, I can turn back and contemplate my paintings. So I love that. We all yeah. need a little distance from our, our work to see a different perspective of what we're uh -huh. doing. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, please show us the exhibit uh, and what you were, oh, hold on. you showed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and this how you came up with the concept. That would be a great okay. uh, way of, of talking so about this. So this is the poster that we use for the show. Okay. This is the original thing that uh, gave me the spark to do all the show. So this was inspired in Adele uh, by Klimt, Adele the first. Yes. The original painting is here, so you can see it. So what I did is I translated Adele or the person into a chair. Because as you know, chairs are my thing. And I was <laughs> in the museum in New York and I was so amazed by how Klimt painted Adele. So I was like, I should make one of those. <laughs> so I try, I, what I did is take the woman and put a chair instead. But the chair that I used uh, had to resemble the lady, like the elegance of the lady, the softness of the lady. And so what made that, you, what made you decide, um, What What is behind the chair for you? Why do you identify yourself with a chair so much? Okay, it was an accident that I started collecting chairs. Like, I have a lot of chairs, like, here. <laughs> <laughs> so, every time I went on a trip, I I will buy a chair, or people will buy chairs for me from their trips. Um, and then I started painting, and instead of painting just Um, let me turn the camera around. We will talk about that. So instead of, um, I, I started painting chairs instead of painting the apple or like still lifes. I don't like to paint from other people's work. I take my pictures and I go from there. So I had a lot of chairs in my house. So I was like, oh, what should I paint? Oh, a chair. It was like natural. And then it, it Um, like it it was like two or three different things that connected me to the chair in a different situation like like an, an alive 
person. Like, uh, let, me, let me show you this one. Okay. So these ones are like in love, like they're, they're something. They're, yeah, they are. They're like in the middle of a park or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or this one, they're like flirting or touching shoulders. Yeah. But so you definitely have some sort of connection that you're humanizing that connection without having the human body in it. And so you're making it sophisticated, you're making it, you're giving it a story, you're giving it grounds, you're giving it all these different things. And now you're giving it a master's like you're, you're going to the master's and you're going there to find the right painting that speaks to you. And now you are converting that or merging that into your body of work. Uh -huh. Yeah, sometimes I think about the story that that chair has lived in or the stories that uh, she listened to. And then I see chairs on the street and I'm like, I go like, what happened to you? <laughs> Why <laughs> did they kick you out from your house? <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, let's keep going and, and showing us uh, the rest of the collection because it's, I think it's, and you can, yeah, whatever is easier for you. Okay, so the, after that one, I painted the second, Adele the second is this one. Oh, wow. I have the, okay, so this is the original painting. And this I is love a it. my painting. They all uh, square format, so I had to translate not only the chair or the lady into a chair, but the whole background to fit it in into a square. That's amazing. Yeah, I love is, I love that. This is more like a hybrid because I didn't translate it um, from the original one. This okay. I, I took like uh, the Klimt elements and the gold and and this was made during lockdown so I was like decompressing myself <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a lot of that yeah I exactly that one came this one this is a mural I took a class on how to paint like mural and we painted a lady um it's Juanita Obrador that's her name okay is this one that I painted for the class. Oh, wow. I remember so I, that. <laughs> so I took that and so I already have that one, the two clamps, and then I went to the gallery and said, okay, I want to have a show about this. And so I painted three at the same time. This clamped. Yeah. This is my Prima Bessie. This is the original one. Wow. I love the colors and the vitality and the story behind it. It really is, it's really great. I love it. And yeah. I put the bird instead of the bow, the bow that she has on her hair. And then I had this Matisse. Let's see that. I can't see that very well. Here. Oh, there we go. Oh, you made a very comfortable chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is where the hair will have been, but I put this uh, instead. I just saw where it's uh, the original one. I just saw it. I don't know where it jumped. And okay. then I and made then you this. did the Van Gogh. This yeah. Is Van wow. Gogh. This is the one that you saw. Yeah. And this chair is my mom's dining table chairs and I, oh. I took this because all of the um, swirls that he had on the on the original painting yeah mm -hmm. yes yeah. so did you then um once you had that there we go look at that you guys this is just amazing I love that Thank um you. Did you uh, approach the gallery and did you write them a proposal or how did that come about? Well, this is the gallery when, where I show um, my work. This is Art on 3D or Ashton Gallery. 
-hmm. So she, the the owner is my mentor. So it oh. was easy to approach her. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. perfect because I'm sure she was very proud of you that you uh, went ahead and then you you started this whole thing. And um, I I strongly believe that you have. And when we met a few weeks ago, you and I, we talked about. Um, finding your path and I think you're finding it through this um, mm -hmm. and you're making it very much your own and um, it's very important to have your own language of art right yeah. so it doesn't matter if it's representative if it's abstract if it's whatever mm -hmm. it is but it's your own language and so mm -hmm. as long as you continue to find that you're going to be very successful <laughs> thank you yeah yes. I have to show you um so this is a this is um david hockney he I made love a that. look at the glasses <laughs> yeah so this is the original one he made this oh. um it, this is a collage on top of a, a newspaper so what i did for this one i painted my paper and then started with the collage with a chair. So you can see like the, the tie, the glasses. The yeah, scarf. I love that. I think that one really speaks to me because you really um, interpreted the chair as the figure. Um, and so the other ones, maybe the background is more important. On this uh -huh. one, I think that the main figure is the focal point. And so... Right. Um, I really enjoy that one a lot. Thank you. And this is the last one that I made. This is um, Econ Chile. Oh, I love. Oh. This is the original one. Oh, my goodness. That also has the same quality as, as the one that we just saw. So Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. And I love the and cap on the I, top. Thank you. That's the hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I sign it like he did. Oh, that's perfect. Mm. Oh, my gosh. That is perfect. And then, um, so you made, um, you're very, very generous because you made um, some prints that were mixed media that were going to be donating to Feeding America. And hopefully... If there's a buyer today, um, we're asking $200 for this original piece of artwork from Yael. So Yael, do you have it handy? The, yeah. Yes, she made, she, we actually have two for sale and exactly. we're asking $200 um, for each. So um, you will be helping 2,000 meals if you purchase one. So $200 we're asking today. Look at that, you guys. This is just incredible. Can you talk a little bit about the process of that one? Yes. These two, um, this is the other one. This is, these are called Entangled Conversations. Wow. Because of the chairs, they're all talking at the same time. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you made a diptych. Yeah, I made a diptych. These are uh, clay boards. I painted the blue with acrylic, and then I made my own stamps. Um, Which you're going to show us next. But mm -hmm. so you guys, yeah. if, if you're interested in purchasing um, Yael's um, prints today or mixed media artwork, uh, please DM me or Yael, and we'll let you know um, what you have to do. But it's super easy. 100% of the profit goes to Feeding America. So let's keep helping people that need our are, are, you know, they need us more than ever. So uh, if you would like to purchase this, please, please send me a message or Yael, we're asking $200 for each one of them. So let's, uh, let's help today. And, and, uh, and in turn, you'll get an incredible piece of artwork from Yael. This is Entangled Conversation 1. And this is Entangled Conversation 2. Awesome. Thank you. So now you're going to show us um, how you make your stamps, right? Yes. Let me show you my stamps, my chair stamps that I was talking about um, on the, these are the stamps. Oh, wow. 
And, and you I made them, them, right? I made them, yeah. So cool. Yeah, this one. And for I that one, that. Um, relief ink, which is the ink that you use for line of, um, line of printing. Okay. So it's an oil base. Um, so that's why it's a little bit shiny. So does it take longer to dry too? Yeah, it does. It does. It's so can already... you work, can you work, um, can you stamp a several at the same time and just let it sit? Or do you have to stamp one at a time and then let it sit? No, I was doing all that in once and I changed okay. the color. Okay. So, so it's, is it a, a red and a pink? It's red and a little bit of, yeah, I was like lighting the, the red. As yeah, it's amazing. Forward. I love it. I love the rhythm of it. I think that they're dancing and they're having a grand time all together. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that nice? laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we just need to be sitting there and sipping some tequila and just like, you know, toasting to life. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to move to the other side of the table because I have okay. my truck there. Perfect. So we can Perfect. So we're going to do a demo on um, on stamping. And oh, how... look at this chair. I made this chair for the show, too. Oh, wow. And for this, I also used a, a stamp here. A newspaper? Oh, a there newspaper. you go. This is Japanese newspaper. And I did all this stamping here, and I painted over the, sta the, the stamp. The, the stamps. It's uh -huh. so cool. Wow. Thank you. And they brought it all together. Yeah. And this is the back of the chair. Also oh, with I the stamps. I love that. Yeah. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah, I very, think this Very, very cool. I wanted to do like my self-portrait with this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that truly speaks to me of Mexico and colors and flowers and, you know, <laughs> all of that. It's just yeah, fantastic. and the different patterns. And the different patterns and the different stripes. And yeah, it's just a very cool, um, cool thing for sure. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. So for the rubber stamp, I use this one that I like. I buy this in Amazon. Okay, what is that? It's it's just rubber. I think okay. this one comes from China. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so I I I traced these um, parts yesterday, so we can do the demo. Okay, perfect. Because I wanted to do something simple, and hearts, it's something that I paint a lot too okay it's a recurring motif motif in my paintings okay so once you have your design you grab one of these um tracing, tracing papers. papers okay uh -huh. and you just trace um you need like a 2b uh, pencil okay because you need the grease to transfer it to the rubber. Oh, I see. So it is important to have the 2B versus a uh -huh. different kind. Okay. 2B or something, um, or 3B, but okay. just not the 3H um, or something. You need the grease. Yeah. Okay. I never would have thought about it, but I guess, yeah, yeah. you're right. And you try to go the most um, precise here that I didn't but that's okay so <laughs> once you have that you take the the rubber you turn your page around okay and so you put it upside down oh yeah and with a, the back of the uh, brush or something like that 
Oh, that's how it transfers yeah, the transfer. oil. Uh -huh. That's why it's, yeah, yeah. That's why it's important to have the, um, the grease of the pencil. I see. So you can see it clearly when you're carving into it. Uh -huh. Perfect. So now that I have this, I like we actually, to yeah, I was going to ask you, do you use an X-Acto knife to cut it or do you, yeah. Okay. I cut the, um, the excess. Can you go, okay. uh, can you move the whole thing further up? There we go. Perfect. Sorry. No, you're yeah, good. Yeah, I cut this part because I can use this later. Yeah. Or I can use this part later too. It's small. But you can use it. It's usable, yeah. Yeah. And it's easier for, for you to be more precise um, for the figure. Mm -hmm. So with the, the, um, these gouges, you go over the edge. So whatever you cut, it's not going to show. Whatever remains on the plate, that's what it's going to uh, print. Right. So, so you're playing with negative and positive spaces. Exactly. So the positive is what's going to show and the negative will not. Uh-huh. And it's uh, for etchings, it's the opposite. Whatever goes deep. Whatever you're what carving, the... it's what's going to show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So this is used only for, for stamping? What? Uh, say it again. So, so this technique is, is you use is only for stamping, correct? Yeah, because you cannot pass this through the press because it's so soft that it, it, it will squish. Okay. So this is only for stamps. So you go all around and and then you remove, you go inside and then you start carving, carving, carving until you are actually just seeing the hearts. Exactly. How, um, how easy is it to carve into? It looks pretty easy. These ones are really soft. That's why I, want, I, I like them. And my tools are, are sharp. These are more, um, I guess, professional, you can say. Yeah. Because it looks like you're not applying a lot of pressure and it's still coming off. Mm-hmm. Let me just cut this part here so okay. I can show you how it prints. Okay. And I'm doing this really uh, fast, so it's not very precise what I'm doing. But just Don't worry. so you can see and have, get the idea of the stamping. For sure, yeah. And then these times I apply it to my paintings and I paint over them. So you don't have to trace them every time. That's nice. And then you keep all the stamps. How long can you reuse them for? Oh, forever. Forever? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now I have this and I'm later gonna, gonna come um, and cut the rest of it. But just so you can see it. And I have this huge stamp uh, pad. Do you use different colors for that? Yes. Yes, they have these in many colors. Also on Amazon. So you apply is it cheaper? Is it cheaper to go to Amazon? Is that why you're going there? Or you just actually really like the product? I haven't seen these uh, big things anywhere. So that's okay. where I found them. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's yeah. so, so cool. So later I'm going to come to uh, carve the, the rest of it. But oh, now I love it. Thank you. I love yeah, it, love so it, love it. I have all kinds of stamps <laughs> that I've been carving. So, wow. That's so yeah. fun. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's so yeah. fun. So I, I'm going to turn back the comments now for people to ask any questions for Yale at sure. this time. But um, I really enjoy uh, the process of it. It feels very therapeutic as well. <laughs> it is.
<laughs> Very satisfying, it is. actually. It is. Sometimes right? when, I'm, when I'm talking on the phone, when I'm talking on the phone, I'm carving like it's doodling. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like, you know, either you're knitting or you're doing something with your hands and it's just very satisfying because you see the result right away. And mm -hmm. so um, I love feeling that and seeing that. And um, so, uh, yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions for Yael, please ask them now. Um, what are the um, what are your favorite materials? I love painting with oils. That's never going to be the anything like the smell of the oil how it glides on the canvas i i just love it that's my favorite uh, medium but i do enjoy so, painting yes yeah go ahead I no <laughs> ask me <laughs> irma is asking uh what's the product uh name so both the products the rubber and then the stamp that you used it's a uh, rubber for stamping and, and I, you show us the brand does it say in anywhere no. on the thing no mm -mm. what is on amazon oh well yeah i have these big ones here okay so what's the name of it my what is it rubber carving blocks um yeah so somebody just asked, and we talked about it, what is the meaning of the chair in your work? So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, now I like to think of the chair. Like, I give my full imagination the freedom of um, giving a voice to the chair, a voice, a personality, a situation, or uh, just a feeling. And I think that wherever you, you know, because you can transport it and and put it up and move it around and um, it gives it even more personality to it, you know, because like you said, if, if there's a chair outside and it's all big up, you're thinking like, God, what happened to you, right? But if okay. they're in a dining room chair, you know, that is <laughs> beautiful and, you know, they had a very luxurious life, you know, so yeah. it definitely emanates life for sure. Yeah, let me show you this one, this painting. It's called Feeling uh, Regal. Oh, there so you go. This one, I painted, and for me, it doesn't matter where you in life, where are you in life, or where you physically. As soon, as long as you feel uh, regal and you feel proud of yourself, and you, um, that's everything. One hundred percent. Everything for me. One hundred percent. So, Yael, if you, because you're more of an emerging artist and, and you are, you've been here for the last two years and really changing the way you're painting and changing the way you're marketing and changing the way you're showing your art and being more present on social media, do you have any tips for incoming artists that would help them? Yeah, struggle, struggle, struggle. Don't rely on anyone. You are you yourself, you have to advertise yourself. Nobody's going to do it for you. I was really shy to like oh, buy my product and I'm selling, selling, selling. And I'm not about selling. I tell you already, I'm about creating. But if you don't sell yourself, nobody's going to do it for you. And if you submit to as many shows and you have rejections, don't worry about rejections. Rejections means that you were trying. So don't exactly. rely on me. And what it's, have you learned um, from the marketing perspective of, of doing things a little differently? Yeah, it's very different now because you have to, you have all the platforms, like you have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you have all your tools on your hands to do it. And it's very different uh, from the days that people were knocking on doors of um, galleries to sell. So it's all in you. You have to. Yeah. And always, I, I always say to my people, like, you have to find the balance. You do have to have a social media presence, but don't have that be your entire day world. 
Uh, oh, you no. have to have a balance on that. You know, you you do ten minutes of your post and then you move on, and and so so it's not um, so it doesn't make you feel anxious about it, and and exactly. um, you, you don't have to go there, right? Yeah, don't go get obsessed. Like, oh, I only have twenty two likes. Doesn't matter. People yes. see my work and people tell me, oh, I I love your chairs. Okay, why don't you give me likes? And I don't care if they give me likes or not. That's yeah, fine. you. I think you have to be comfortable in your own skin and know exactly. that that it doesn't matter. The likes are not what's going to get you out of anything, right? It's it's yourself. It's yeah. looking in inside of you. you. Have like five active um, followers, or you can have one million followers that they're not active. They don't see you. It's just yeah. the number. Don't worry about the number. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And where do you see yourself in a year? What are your um, desires at this point? I would like to show my work outside San Diego. That's to be honest. And this show that I just um, finished with, in my mind, it was going to be like a traveling um, show, like in museums and galleries. But I sold five pieces, so I have to create more. And I and, and <laughs> from the Masters 2.0 or something like that. Yeah, I think that you you found a really cool niche, and and it's very original, and it's very you. And I think you have to push yourself and see what's there. You know, I mean, someone is asking you, "What are you working on now?" and "What is your new project?" Well, we were just talking about it, so. <laughs> You know, just, I think just, that you have to do the point two. <laughs> yeah, I was born out with this one and I went on vacation and I came back. So I'm not working on anything right now. I just, I finished all my product, projects before going on my trip. So good for you. New me, new thing. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, I, yeah. I'm so happy. And can we show again the two pieces that are for sale today? Sure. Remember, you guys, um, if you want them, they're $200 a piece. Um, they're to be donated to um, to Feeding America, the proceeds. Uh, if you buy one, you will be helping 2,000 meals. So if we buy, if we sell the two of them, it will be 4,000 meals that we will be giving. So please consider um, uh, buying this incredible artwork from Yael. And again, you can message me or Yael and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll tell you what to do. But um, Yael, thank you so much. Uh, much. Muchas gracias, amiga. Te quiero mucho. Te quiero. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, Yael. Thank you. Bye, everyone.